All right, fastest 15 minutes on the internet, fastest 15 minutes in social media. My name is Judson Powell. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Uh, please hit the notification button, or I guess it's a, a bell or whatever. Hit the bell, and um, of course, hit the love button. Love one another. All right, so I want to talk about Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I don't want to uh, take away any of his accolades, but um, Nobel Prize winner, um, just, you know, all around good brother. Okay, and so I have some, I have some real, you know, real important thoughts about the... Um, the civil rights movement, and of course, Dr. King. Now, there was a lot going on, and the one thing that I came to realize when I uh, and I and let me let me preface this story like this: while I was in in law school, the final thing that you had to do uh, to graduate from our law school was that you had to write um, a thesis based in law, and so I decided to get all of the. Uh, to, to go in and get all of the cases uh, that were involved in the civil rights movement. So there, and there were a lot of it, you know, a lot of them. There, you know, Loving versus Virginia, you know, Brown versus Board of Education, um, you know, the uh, Heart of Atlanta Motel. Uh, there were just a lot of cases, okay? And, you know, and so I, I started, you know, I started piecing all these cases together and their, pro and, and the other thing is, and their progeny. OK, because cases just don't get to the Supreme Court or they don't just get, you know, they don't just pop up in the Supreme Court. What happens is they go through a lot of other uh, litigation or cases uh, along the way and other little smaller cases are brought up. And then as time goes on, then eventually they evolve into the thing where uh, you end up um, and it's called a writ of certiorari. And what you're doing is you're trying to. Uh, basically get into the Supreme Court or find out if the Supreme Court will hear your case. So during that time, basically the NAACP uh, Legal Defense Fund uh, and, and basically headed up by uh, the first um, descendant of Alkebulon, uh, Thurgood Marshall, um, he was he was the original. He was basically the originator, and there was a, a lot of other you know attorneys, including my grandfather, uh, that you know that that did research and 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 you know put stuff before the courts all the time. And so their strategy and basically their strategy was related to Dr. King, and the strategy was always to be able to what to. Um, desegregate so desegregation and integration were the things well as i started reading these cases i was i was kind of you know i was kind of confused because at at a point i got to the point that i was like well you know because i'm a thinker and i was like well this wasn't a good idea <laughs> you know most of the stuff that they're doing is like gonna kill us and I was thinking to, and I mean, this is just the thought that came to my mind after reading most of the cases, because there were, there were in some of these cases, you know, white folks and white businesses and white corporations, they were like going to, they were going to settle with a lot of the people in these cases and give them like not only millions of dollars, but also give them institutions, you know, give them their own, their own institutions. And so, you know, it was like, well, instead of instead of you letting me instead of let us letting you into our college or into our university, we will build you a college or a university uh, instead of uh, allowing you into our law school. Uh, we will build you law schools uh, instead of allowing you to be uh, in our community. You know, we will build you your own community, which along the entire line. Every place that that you know that the NAACP Legal Defense Fund went, they turned all of these things down, you know, blanketly. And I was just like, well, I mean, okay, if we had, you know, I mean, we had HBCUs. Don't get me wrong, we had HBCUs, but you know, they were talking about expanding them and and you know having you know um, separate but equal. And after a while, I started. The more I started reading. Because what happened was when we decided that we wanted to, you know, be uh, have desegregation, we lost everything. We were the ones that lost. 
it wasn't, you know, no, nowhere along this entire line did, you know, that white folks lose. And the same thing with, you know, and all of these things. And it's almost like the whole thing with like right now with inclusion. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, and there there was a lot. But I believe and the reason why I put on my timeline today is that I put a picture of Malcolm X and I said, I'm going to tell my grandchildren that this was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I did it as I did it jokingly, but I really wasn't joking because I was trying to explain that um that um that Fard Muhammad, uh Elijah Muhammad, uh later on Malcolm X and and also, you know, I- including now uh, uh you know Minister Farrakhan and I'm not and I'm not talking about religious ideology. I'm not talking about the religion of Islam. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the is the is the idea that you have to do for self and that the only way uh, to be free of, of 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 slavery and of oppression and all of that is by having your own institutions. And I know throughout history, they've always, you know, they've destroyed our institutions as well, but that's only because we allowed them into the positions where, you know, except for maybe, you know, Black Wall Street and a couple of other instances, but, it, but mainly we allowed them into, um, into our institutions. Because b- think about this. In the 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, we had our own hotels, we had our own restaurants, we had our own um, our own sports leagues. You know, we 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 had the Negro leagues. We had our own barnstorming uh, baseball and you know basketball teams and and all of that. But and but our striving to try to get them to you know to love us and include us. We gave all of that up. And what happened was that they took all of that over. So it was a big deal. So everybody was striving to be like or to be included into um, mainstream, into the into the white society. And I don't even really want to say mainstream because, for example, you know, I could I can think about conversations with my grandfather and my grandmother you know i had my mother's mother loved baseball and she used to tell me stories about the negro leagues and how they would like barnstorm and they would go from city to city and just play games and it would be entertaining they would have you know they would have people there like concession like the whole theory behind concession stands you know the women would cook food and they would have you know music and, and dancing and everything else but it was for us it had nothing to do with them so everything basically started with us and then all of a sudden, you know, we had the, you know, major, the so-called major leagues. And then it was, everybody was like trying to strive to get into those major leagues. And so that's, so that's kind of what happened. So as that type of stuff happened, then the next thing we knew, it was just like, okay, they owned everything and we what? We owned nothing. So we owned nothing. Okay, the ownership of all those leagues, you know, and and it was primarily it was primarily um, Jewish, white, you know, uh, what what we would call, you know, what the the real Hebrew Israelites guys, you know, that's who that's who owned everything. And we allowed it because we thought that we were being inclusive. So anyway, so I write this I write this thesis. okay, and. The, the, the man that was supposed to grade or supposed to, you know, I was supposed to present my thesis to and I was supposed to, you know, it was supposed to be the, you know, they, they challenge your thesis and then you have to sit there and you have to defend what you're saying. And the guy that was supposed to, you know, who I was supposed to defend it against or the, the you know, he refused, well, he was one of the guys, he refused, you know, it, it, he he basically said I shouldn't graduate from law school, right? <laughs> because I was so adamantly in my adamant in my stance about how we should go about like trying to basically become free, and and how that the civil rights movement and especially Dr. King, and here's where it all came, where it all goes back to Dr. King. Dr. King was a setup. OK, and I know people people don't. But Dr. King literally was a setup because there were a lot of there were a lot of people out there, a lot of black leaders. It wasn't just Dr. King and not all of them was nonviolent. 
a lot of them wanted to just bash white folks head in, you know, go back and go back and, and read your history, you know, and, and, and even, even Malcolm to an extent, you know, Malcolm wasn't like all the, and that's the only reason why he was able to get into the, into the mainstream press and everything like that. But even when he, when they let him into the mainstream press, they tried to discredit him. Go back and look at all those interviews, go back and look at the interviews and, but see, but the, the difference was, was that, um, you know, that, that basically Dr. King was playing softball and Malcolm X was playing hardball and, you know, Kwame Turi and, and people like that, they were playing, you know, H rap Brown, they were playing hardball. They was like, look, you know, we're going to stomp your head in. And that's how come they basically, they eradicated them. But here's the difference between the way they eradicated them. They eradicated them without giving them any shine. It was like, we're not going to give you any shine. OK, we don't want we don't want people following you, but they wanted us to follow Dr. King. Why? Because of his stance of nonviolence and because of his relationship with with Gandhi, who they who they also assassinated. So don't so, you know, so don't get in you know, the, the monument and the holiday. They didn't want to give us that stuff. They really did. not you know, and let's go back, you know, and I, and I keep on talking to y'all about the NFL and their policies and their standards and everything. The NFL was one of the last, well, you know, it was the last bastion of slavery, you know, that, you know, all of these leagues and everything like that, they were, they were akin to slavery because that's how they set them up. And even, in, and even during the industrial revolution, everything that occurred in the fifties and sixties, it was so that what, so that they could keep power and control. Because once again, I would tell you all of the inventions, all of the things that made money during the industrial revolution were basically, they were inventions or they were discoveries of people who were descendant of Alkebulon. They were not European discoveries. These people did not discover anything. What they did was, was that they took everything, they stole it, put it in their name legally. That's why I keep saying about the law. They took all of this stuff legally, put it in their name, the patents, the trademarks, because what? Because we didn't know how their system worked. They set up a system where we were outside of the system and we wanted to, and this is the problem, we wanted to be outside of the system. We wanted them, you know, we wanted to be, you know, with them, you know, because that's what that's basically what, you know, integration and desegregation. That's what it was all about. We wanted, but they didn't, they gave us a piece. They gave us a mental piece, but they never gave us a physical piece. They never gave us, you know, they never, the only thing that they gave us was what? The church. And so that's why we're always against religion. And we're, you know, we're always, they're like, oh, you know, you hate Jesus. No, I don't hate Jesus. But I, if, if you knew what Jesus was about and what Jesus stood for, you would hate Jesus too, because Jesus was made to enslave you and to take your power and your freedoms away. All right. That's, that's what it was about. So that they could steal, they could, they could make all the money. What do you think they're living on now? How do you think all of these people, you go to like like these really ex expensive neighborhoods and these people got million and billion dollar houses and stuff like that. Where do you think they got it from? They're, you know, all of, the, all of the free, think how many you're talking about, you're talking about three, 400 years of free labor and all they did was stack paper. And it was because and half of it was our fault because during the 50s and the 60s, we should have took that stuff. We should have been like, OK, you want to you want to build us. You want to build us schools and you want to build us. Uh, you want to build us this, that and the other thing. OK, fine. Build it for us as long as it's equal. And that's what we should have done. Separate but equal. If we would have done separate but equal right now, we would be in great shape, you know, unless, you know, of course, unless, you know, um, Unless they, they, you know, started a war with us or something like that. But other than that, but they weren't going to do that because they wanted their stuff. That's why I keep telling people, oh, there's going to be a civil war. It's like, there's not going to be a civil war. Why? Because they, they want to live too. You know, you think they want to, look, the only people that's mad about racism and talk about these civil wars and Walker, even those people that are up in Virginia today, you know, marching and protesting, they pour white trash, y'all. That's what they are. Realize. Cause, because they ain't got nothing to lose. But rich white folks, rich white folks ain't out there. Why? Because they got something to lose. Anyway, Fast 15 Minutes is over. Like button, subscribe button, do all of that. 
Love, but I love y'all.